What if the next great city wasn't built on land? In a quiet corner of the UK, just across the Severn Estuary, a flooded quarry is being transformed into something that sounds like science fiction. A permanent human settlement under the sea. Welcome to Project Deep, the world's most ambitious underwater construction. In 2021, Deep acquired a 20 hectare flooded quarry in Gloucestershire, 80 metres deep and naturally pressurised. Instead of draining it, they saw something no one had attempted before, a construction site beneath the water. Here's the challenge. At 200 metres deep, pressure multiplies structural loads by 20 times. Traditional materials corrode. Conventional construction methods collapse. Yet DEEP needs to build not just one structure, but an entire modular system capable of housing crews for weeks at a time. This quarry isn't just a test site, it's an underwater construction laboratory. Each sentinel habitat must withstand forces that would crush most buildings, while maintaining life support systems that work flawlessly under extreme conditions. The backer? A single anonymous investor who's committed over $125 million to solve what might be the most complex construction challenge on Earth. As the project scales toward ocean deployment, that figure is expected to top $300 million. But throwing money at an impossible problem doesn't make it possible. How do you build something strong enough and safe enough to survive where humans were never meant to live? It starts with rethinking construction from the ground up, or in this case, the seabed up. Instead of pouring concrete or assembling prefabricated panels, the team turned to robotic wire arc additive manufacturing, a type of industrial 3D printing that builds steel structures layer by layer. Each dome is formed using custom-engineered steel, designed specifically to withstand both the immense pressure and corrosive conditions of long-term ocean exposure. Some walls are more than 20 centimeters thick, and every step of the build, every weld, every viewpoint, is certified by Det Nersk Veritas, the same maritime authority that oversees offshore oil rigs and deep-sea vessels. That level of oversight wasn't optional. It was learned the hard way. After the Titan submersible disaster in 2023, Deep's team made a simple decision. No shortcuts, no compromises. Everything must be certified to offshore class standards before it ever touches the water. So what's actually inside these habitats? Each sentinel is a self-contained underwater home. Six private sleeping quarters, a shared kitchen and living space, a full bathroom with running water and a closed-loop waste system, a central control and observation room with panoramic portals, and a moon pool, an open chamber in the floor that lets divers swim in and out without breaking pressure. Advanced life support systems manage everything from oxygen and carbon dioxide levels to humidity, temperature, and power. Backup systems provide redundancy in case anything goes wrong, including emergency lighting, oxygen stores, and freshwater reserves. Each habitat is powered via surface-linked cables with plans to integrate marine renewable energy systems like underwater turbines and battery banks. And when it's time to scale, the Sentinels are modular. Standardized docking ports allow them to connect into multi-unit campuses, entire underwater research villages where teams from different countries can live and work together on the seafloor. This isn't just a structure. It's a prototype for a permanent human presence in one of Earth's most hostile environments. But designing a structure that can survive the deep is only half the equation. The real question is, can people survive inside it? Because living underwater isn't just an engineering challenge, it's a human one. Turns out solving the physics was the easy part. The real question became, can people actually handle living in what you've built? It all started with a full-size Sentinel mock-up, built above ground at Deep's Gloucestershire campus. Here, crews began 28-day simulations to answer a tough question. What happens when you try to live underwater? Turns out, even eating became a problem. In pressurized environments, food goes bland, 
not from taste bud compression, but from fluid shifts and reduced smell sensitivity. So Deep's culinary lead, Joe Costa, rebuilt the entire menu. Spicy curries, rich sauces, sticky toffee pudding, all tested in hyperbaric chambers to make sure they'd still taste good at depth. And those calories? They're essential. Even at 200 meters, the cold and pressure burn energy fast. People lose weight without realizing it, so every bite has to fuel both body and mind. But the hardest challenge wasn't physical. It was psychological. Early trials showed how quickly stress builds in confined spaces. Tension, irritability, isolation, no sunlight, no escape. So today, crews train like astronauts. 12 to 18 months of prep with mission simulations, sleep tracking and team cohesion tests. Because at this depth, you can't just swim to the surface. Decompression takes days. Once you're down, you're down. And while that might sound like a futuristic leap, this idea isn't new. In fact, for a brief moment in the 20th century, we came surprisingly close. Jacques Cousteau launched the ConShelf program, a series of experiments that proved people could survive and work underwater. The first, ConShelf 1, placed two men 10 meters down off the coast of Marseille for seven days, a breakthrough at that time. The US Navy followed with Sea Lab, pushing crews to deeper depths, longer missions, and harsher conditions. By the 1970s, more than 60 underwater habitats had been built worldwide, including Hydrolab, Tektite, and Marine Lab. Even NASA joined in, using undersea missions to simulate spaceflight, where small crews face isolation, pressure, and no margin for error. But by the 1980s, funding dried up. The momentum shifted to space. Most habitats were dismantled or forgotten. Today, only one survives. The Aquarius Reef Base off the Florida Keys, still active, still training astronauts. Now, Project Deep marks the boldest revival yet. Not a one-off experiment, but a scalable, permanent infrastructure for human life on the ocean floor. And it's not alone. Fabian Cousteau is building Proteus in the Caribbean. Other teams are developing modular stations in the Mediterranean, Red Sea, and beyond. But right now, no project is further along than Project Deep, which is already being built, and it's closer to deployments than you might think. At their Gloucestershire campus, crews are running simulations inside a full-size Sentinel replica. Next up is the Vanguard habitats, smaller three-person units set for underwater trials in 2025. The first real Sentinel is scheduled to launch in 2027, starting in the Quarry Lake before moving into the open ocean. Custom submersibles will handle crew rotations and supplies. And where they're headed, the Twilight Zone, holds more marine life than any other part of the ocean. Yet we know almost nothing about it. If we can live there, we won't just unlock new science. We might open the door to a new human frontier. So now we want to hear from you. Would you like to live underwater? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching it. And if you're into Megabuild stories, hit subscribe. We've got more coming soon.